Welcome back to session three in the AutoCAD for Arboriculture tutorial series. In this session, we cover layer creation and management. What is a layer in AutoCAD? So layers are the primary method for organizing the objects, the drawing. Layers can reduce the visual complexity or, or busyness, if you like, of, of, a, of a drawing um, and improve display performance by hiding um, information that you, you don't need to see at any given time. Also, CAD drawings, as we know, are representations of lines or arcs. Um, now, by using different colors or line weights or line types um, to represent different things, you can make a drawing easier to understand. Now, using layers can make that drawing process easier. Once you've set up some commonly used layers, when you draw an object on a particular layer, it will have the same line weight, the same color, and same line type, and other properties of other objects on that layer. It just gives you better better controls to plot your drawing. In session two, we looked at uh, the drawing tools. We didn't talk about properties of the objects we're drawing. We're drawing a simple uh, representation of a tree with a canopy spread, root section area, a tree number and a stem diameter here. So all the information about that tree we need is on the drawing. It's, it's not easy to read. Um, Everything's the same color, the same line weight, the same line type. Um, so we need to change that to make it to make it a readable drawing. Now we can change each object to represent something different by changing the color. Like I say, it's line weight or it's um, a line type. So I'm just going to do that on an individual basis. So I'll grab the RPA there, by selecting it. I'm going to change the color. Sorry, I'm in the properties tab here. I'm going to change the color to let's go for an orange. And I'm going to change the line type for that as well to, to a dashed line type. And we've got the crown spread here. So we'll change that to a green maybe. And let's maybe change the tree number to magenta. So we can already see that of each of these um, each of these objects obviously represents something different because they are, they have different properties. Now rather than having to do your drawing and then go around and change individual objects, the way we do that is by the use of, of layers. So if I pop into the layer properties manager, this brings up a table that shows each of the layers on a line with each of its attributes as titles and on the top. Now what this is showing us is that we have one, two, three, four, five layers available to draw on in this drawing. Um, status wise, the one with the tick next to it is the one we're currently drawing on. I can change that by double clicking on another layer. And then we'll be drawing on the JH Cat A trees layer. So the name of the layer is important, obviously. You recognize uh, Cat A, Cat C, tree numbers and trunks. Um, because I've given them sensible names, everyone knows what they are. You'll, you will come across drawings where they have uh, number codes. Um, and whilst if you know what the codes mean, that's useful. If you uh, are a third party using the drawing, that's um, often not a no great help. Now I have the ability to turn layers on and off. So you've got this light bulb icon just here. So we're going to be looking at the um, layer zero. So all of this, if you remember, was drawn on layer zero. Although I've changed the colors and some of the line types, it's all still on layer zero. So if I turn off layer zero, we can no longer see anything that's on that layer. You'll notice the light bulb has gone off as well. So that helps um, to simplify a drawing. If there's lots of layers and there's lots of stuff on there you don't need to be seeing, uh, you can simplify a drawing by turning off multiple layers and, and making, uh, making it clearer. When you turn off a layer, obviously it doesn't delete uh, any of the data on that layer, it simply turns it off so you can't see it. Now there's also a freeze and thaw. You've got a sunshine and if I freeze it, I've got a little uh, snowflake. Now it looks like it's done the same thing. But the difference between freeze and thaw and on and off is if you use the on off tool, all of the items on that layer 
whether it's turned on or off, are still being rendered in the drawing. It's just you can't see them or you can see them. So the processor in your computer is still having to work to, to render those objects, even though you may not be able to see them. Freezing thaw, however, if you freeze a layer, you can you're telling the computer that it doesn't have to consider those layers, the, those objects on that layer anymore. So if you've got multiple layers which you're freezing, you can see how the computer's doing less work because it's not having to render all of those uh, objects in the background. So it can actually speed up the running of AutoCAD for you. So freeze and thaw and on and off. You can also lock layers. Now if I draw, we're currently in Cat A, I'll just draw a, a line here. Uh, if I lock the Cat A trees layer, which I've just drawn on, and I select everything, you'll notice everything's selected. Now if I hit delete, it's only deleted the objects on the layers that I've selected, um, which weren't locked. You can see if I hover over it, it's got a locked padlock. So if you have uh, completed all of your drawing in a layer, and you know that's not going to change, and you can lock that layer to, um, to just to ensure you don't inadvertently change any of the data on it. I'll undo that, uh, delete, and lock that layer. Now I can select it. Colour's fairly obvious, it's the colour you're drawing in. So um, although this says white, and if I draw it, it actually draws in black. That's only because I've got a white background. And that's AutoCAD helping me out. We've got colour codes on uh, category A and category C. These are the colour codes as recommended in BS5837, the red, green, blue colour codes. We can change these colors um, in a few ways. So we can either select uh, from the color index, we can use a true color, which is the red, green, blue, which is what I've had to do for those, uh, those two cat A and cat C trees. Or you can use a color book, which give you palettes of colors, um, which go nicely together. So to change a color, you select on the color, and you choose a new colour, hit OK, and it will change the colour of that layer. You'll notice that the stem diameters, which is the only one I haven't changed in that one, uh, that's still by layer, so that's gone to the yellow. Just change that back to white for clarity. Line type is um, as you saw when I changed the RPA, we have continuous, this is a continuous line. Uh, there are, so currently we've only got uh, continuous and dashed available to us. Um, this is the line type name here. This is how it looks, the appearance, and it gives you a description. And um, sometimes it just gives you a, another representation. Um, so you can change the uh, line type in here. We'll keep that as continuous. If there's a line type, that isn't loaded that you want, you can load a new line type. Um, there's a whole load already available for you in the, in the program. I'm going to just load another one in here. Let's go with hidden. And you can see that's loaded into our, our palette of potential lines we can use. I'll actually leave that as it is for now, continuous. Line, the line weight is the thickness of the line. Um, so you can change the line weight. You'll see that I've got 0.3 millimeters for my other my other lines. Now, transparency isn't something uh, we generally use. Um, it is as you might think it is. You can change the transparency of objects on that layer so you can see through them to greater or lesser degrees. Um, I tend to stick with zero for solid lines and solid colors. The plot style here. Now it defaults to the same colour as the one that you have chosen to draw with. You can change the plot colour. For example, if quite handy to draw with quite gregarious, vivid colours. But you might want to um, print a less extreme version of your drawing with uh, more muted or more pleasing colours. 
So you can draw with one set of colors and you can tell it to print a plot in a set, set of different colors. Plot is simply to, simply tells the program when you print whether or not to plot that layer. And we'll talk about viewport freeze in session five when we talk about printing in greater detail. I'm going to just kind of create another couple of layers here so you can see how it's done. We're going to use the new layer button. Now what's, how, what's going to happen if I select a new layer, it's going to create a clone of the one that's highlighted. Now as I want to, I don't have a cat B or a cat U. So we'll create those two. So I'm going to want it to have all the same properties as my other uh, categories, but I'm going to change the color obviously. So I want to highlight one of those. It's a new layering. This is going to be JH cat U trees. I'm going to change the color. And we're going to use the true color, the red, green, blue code from S5837, which is 127. Zero, zero. This is the color here. We'll okay, that. We also need a cat B. I'm just going to change the color again to the recommended coloration here, which is zero, zero, two, five, five. The only other layer we don't have, which we're definitely going to need, is the RPA layer. So I'm going to just select, select a layer there, um, new layer, JH, RPAs. Now I'm going to change the colour for this one, and I'm going to also want to change the, I'm going to select a brown colour. And we're going to change in this instance the line type as well. So I'm going to select the hidden that we loaded in a moment ago. I've got all the layers now that I'm going to need. And we had our original tree up here. So I'm just going to select all of that by layer. And that'll give them the attributes of that layer zero. Continuous lines, default line weight, and uh, white or black, black color. But now, I'm going to put these onto the correct layers. I'm going to close the layer properties. Bring this down. So we've got the RPAs here. So I'm going to select the RPA circle. Go to the drop down and select which layer I want to put it onto and escape and I'm going to do the same with the crown spread this is going to be a category B tree and we've got the stem diameter here so put that on trunks and the um, tree number put that on tree numbers so that's how you change change any existing objects onto the layers you want them on and have, that, have the attributes of that layer. If we want to draw from fresh using layers, we need to select the layer we're going to draw with. So select RPAs, we're going to do six meter circle. If we want to do a draw a trunk, again, I want to select trunks. Now you see that I've changed the two trunks. And do another circle. Let's do the crown spread next. We'll have this as a category A tree. So we select the layer we want to draw on, select the object we want to draw. And now we're going to do the text for tree numbers. I'm going to use multi line text. Select where I want to put that. And T02. You can see it's quite small. 
in comparison. We can change the properties of that either in our properties manager over here or we can um, match the properties from, a, from um, something we've already drawn. I've already drawn this one, it's the size I want. I select that, match properties, and then select the thing I want to match properties to, and then match the same. Now in the same way that I changed, I matched the properties um, of, the, of the text, you could do that with any other item. So if I select that crown spread, match properties, and I change this to a category B tree. Now that we're drawing objects with different properties, uh, there's two other ways of selecting objects I want to show you. So the two selection uh, tools I want to show you are Quick Select and Select Similar. So to select all of the items in a drawing which have the same attributes, um, let's do a Select Similar. So I've selected a circle there. Um, drawn on the layer JHRPAs and all of the attributes are by layer. So it's going to select all of the items within the drawing that have those attributes. So you select the one you want, right click, select similar, and it will select all of the items in your drawing. That will enable you to manipulate all of your similar items if you so desire. Do the same. Um, with the lines, select similar. It's going to select all of the lines on that group with those attributes. Um, but for example, if I do the same with these cat B circles, select similar. You notice it only selects the circles and not the lines, because that is a line, and, it's and being a line is a different object from a circle. So it's only going to select the same. Same object types with the same properties. The other selection method I'm going to show you is uh, Quick Select. Um, it's a little more complicated but incredibly useful tool. So we're going to, we're going to apply this to the whole drawing to search the entire drawing to select whatever we're going to be uh, telling it to select. Now the object type um, is currently set to multiple, so it will select anything, any kind of object with the properties we tell it to look for. We're going to look for um, multiple object types on a particular layer. And the layer we're going to ask it to look for is cat B trees. So I would expect this as we're doing multiple object types to pick up the line and the circles on the cat B layers. And there you have it, that has done that. If, for example, we right click again, quick select, and we only want it specifically to pick up the circles on the layer cat B trees, then that's what it's going to do for us. Um, there are many, many uh, computations to go through, uh, but it's a very handy tool to know that it exists. Um, I've only selected by layer so far, so let's um, select uh, in a different way. Let's go with the polylines, and we're going to ask it this time to select all the polylines in the drawing. And you'll notice that's picked up all of the polylines, no matter what layer they're on, because we asked it to select all the polylines. As we've now spent the time to create all the layers um, that we're probably going to need, um, we can save this as a drawing template. So every time we open this template, we have those, those, um, those layers to work with. So we'll save that as a drawing template. We go to Save uh, so File, Save As, and uh, we need to change the files of type to DWT, which is here, the drawing template. And that's going to save it in the templates folder uh, within AutoCAD. And let's uh, set up a new a new file here. Okay, with new folder. 
H. Be careful, raw salt share. and save I want to put a description in Let's just close that now when we we can go to start a new drawing by right clicking and go to new and instead of opening up the acre LT like we have done so far we can go into the template we've just created In that template, we have all those categories are all set up and we're ready to start drawing straight away. Well done for sitting through to the end of session three. I look forward to seeing you again in session four where we'll be creating a template with printable title blocks at the common paper sizes.